Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> Welcome to the Large Marge Sentence Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie with a Y. And I'm Sweetie with an IE. And coming fresh off our three year anniversary spectacular, we are back doing just, you know, movies. Just movies. <laughs> I mean, we did movies before, but whatever. Um, but mean, now we're three years and a now week. Now we're three years and a week old, so we feel a bit older we a feel wise. mature and so we thought oh my gosh we did ne- we never did <laughs> this movie we skipped to the second one or the third one in the series much to then- our chagrin <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we totally miss the the og the original so tonight we finally did vacation, vacation or national lampoon's vacation, vacation. I always thought it was just vacation, but it wouldn't come up when we searched it today. I'll tell you that. You had to put National Lampoons for it to come up. You know, see, I'm the opposite. I always thought it was National Lampoon. Not vacation? Vacation. Oh, the apostrophe. Yeah. Vacation. Yeah. Okay. No, I I guess I did too. But then I realized somewhere else was like this movie's title is actually just vacation. Yeah. Because there's a lot of National Lampoons like... That's like a thing, like Animal House is that too. So it's well, what was National Lampoon? Because like I didn't really like understand that when all these movies came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like so it was a it was a magazine. So I think it was like satirical magazine, right? And this um, story is born from you know John Hughes, famous John Hughes, um, director writer of Breakfast Club. Um, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. I forget which ones he directed and which ones he just wrote, but he wrote when we covered a lot of the because we've covered a lot, almost all John the John Hughes Mm -hmm. movies at this point, Um, and he's written like a lot of fucking shit, right? So this is one of his like original ones. So it was written in 1979 for this National Lampoon's uh, magazine, Mm -hmm. and it was called Summer of '58. Oh, sorry, Vacation '58. Whoa! And it's his story of when he was five years old and his parents and him and um, his family drive across country from um, Chicago to uh, L.A. or wherever um, Disneyland is, Mm -hmm. Anaheim, Um, and and that trip. So. I, I read the story, uh, mini Sweetie Book Club. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you Google it, you can find it. And then there's like a um, like a screenshot PDF kind of thing of um, the the National Lampoon article or story, and you can read it. And it's like exactly like the movie. The ending's different. So did this? But wait, so many of the same details. But it was crazy. all. But but it was true, or it was just based. Yeah, on Yeah, that's vacation. what I, I don't know, and I don't know if he's ever given like, on it. Um, like you know like any a, interviews on it. Yeah. Yeah, but um, he, yeah, and, and he wrote the screenplay for this too. So obviously like took his story and then like wrote the screenplay from it. But um, yeah, guys, fucking funny film. I mean, it's it's on the list of like 100 funniest comedies, blah, 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 ever, da, da, da. And, and it's huge. It's a big deal. And started what ended up being this like National Lampoon, you know, franchise with that family. So mm-hmm. you're right. Like they have been other ones. Um, I don't know. Wait, isn't Van Wilder a National yeah. Lampoon one, right? So the movie's the Ryan Reynolds Van Wilder guy. Um, and then Animal House of Sweetie Said. So there's been like other ones, but definitely like the Griswold family mm-hmm. have been like the standout for this this National Lampoon brand because this now covers a uh, vacation, mm-hmm. European vacation, uh-huh. Christmas, Christmas vacation, vacation, Vegas vacation, Vegas vacation. vacation. And vacation, and vacation, exclamation right? point, yeah, which, which is the uh, like revamped right. one or right. s- other sequel week. What's it called when it's like not a prequel, but it like takes place after? <laughs> I don't know if there's like a. <laughs> I'm sure there's a word. film I term. Can't think of it, but yes, yeah. So it's been huge, and like we, if, I mean, you talk to any kids from the 80s and 90s, obviously, like 
all this whole franchise really like buttressed like our childhood because so this one um vacation from 1983 so the earliest one my birth year what Woo! what best year ever so this movie is thir- 36 years old guys came out in july so good summer flick good summer in flick. 1983 and then uh, progressed then into the late 80s with the, um, I forget when the European one was, I want to say like 86 or something. And then the 90s brought the Christmas one, mm-hmm. and then the late 90s brought Vegas, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then that vacation kind of revamp one was just a couple years ago. Yeah. So yeah, so it's been like a huge freaking franchise. What do you feel about it, Sweetie Sweeterson? Well, okay. I'm going to admit something, and you're not going to like it. I'm gonna get upset. Okay, I'm I don't ready want for you it. to get upset. I ready. have never actually seen Christmas Vacation. Wow, I think I've seen that one the most. I know, and you always—it's another one of those cases where, like, you always talk about it. And you're like, I love yeah. it so much, Sweetie, and then we never because I'm it's embarrassed like, that you'll get mad at me. Why would I and, get mad at you? Or that I'll be embarrassed for not having seen it or something, or oh. for not telling anyone all this time. But whatever. Well, now this so, is getting a little sketchy. I mean, how many other movies have I like been quoting my entire life? And you're like, ha ha ha, that's so funny. I, don't I love that la- movie. I don't laugh and say I love that movie. I'm just like, ha ha, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just don't come right out and say it. God. God. You just well, put a lot least, of pressure on me. At least it wasn't this one. Yeah. So I've Thank seen, God. yeah. So obviously I, I've seen this one the, probably the most or the second to most. Um, after Vegas Vacation, which was one of those ones that was always on TV. That's your Christmas um, Vacation. I know, but it, it's, it's fine. Um, but this one is the classic, classic family summer vacation flick. I have a lot of memories from this movie, I think. Um, parts of it, like, freaked me out. I thought... Um, I don't know. There's something about the Griswolds that are just, like, gross. They like, are gross. <laughs> And like, especially, I mean, we talked about that in the the European one where they're like especially gross because uh, Rusty and, and Audrey are both in their like awkward Ugh, stage in awful. life. So they're like super gross. But yeah, there's just something with the exception of Ellen. Yeah. It's like they're just like a little gross. Um, but I still enjoy the movie. And this one is is funny. Uh, parts of it didn't a- don't age well, but I think overall still classic classic comedy yeah um so this movie is directed by harold ramus um and you know going through his imdb so obviously very well known for being egon in ghostbusters but actually was a pretty prolific um director but not also writer as well right so like a really famous comedy writer he started on sctv and then um and that's kind of why you notice that a lot of sctv alum are in his movies especially this one so you got john candy you got eugene levy um very cool. And I was looking through. So he died only like a couple years ago. I remember that was kind of sad. He was like, like 69. a long time ago. No, I think it was a couple years ago. Oh. Maybe 2014. Maybe it actually was kind of a while ago. Yeah. But anyway, so he, yeah, so he died kind of early. And, um, you know, I was going through his IMDb and all his director like credits. And I'm like, shit, I love like all of his movies. They're pretty, they're pretty good. Yeah. They're like know? a little under the radar, yeah. but they're like, he wouldn't, I don't know. He didn't like make a big thing of of himself being a, a yeah. director, maybe. Right. So it's I don't know. Right. Definitely. I mean, you so you have Ghostbusters, you have this one. Obviously, Caddyshack was his first one, which I got to be honest. Wait, here, he guys. didn't direct Ghostbusters. No, he didn't. He wrote that was the one he wrote, wrote the story. Um, but I got to be honest, I'm pulling a sweetie here. Never seen Caddyshack. <laughs> That we watched oh like part of it again we i've seen like scenes yeah. i've seen like the I mean, kooky scenes seen it, like, with, like bill murray chasing the the thing through the holes i don't know something like that um i've never seen caddyshack yeah just not just not into it i feel like that's a movie that boys fucking love i don't know and i'm just like <laughs> yeah you know i mean i think it's funny but it's yeah a lot of like girl like boot like oh i don't know like boy right. comedy and which um, is kind of like harold ramus's style in a way so in some some way i'm like why do i like this but you know what? I'm just going to say I do. Um, I was trying to remember other ones he did and the list. He analyzed oh. this. Analyzed yep. Analyze this. Analyze that. Bedazzled. Do you guys remember that one? <laughs> that was like a pretty funny movie back in the day. Um, he did that year one movie, which like got oh, totally yeah. bad reviews. I feel like really bad about. Um, but he wrote like tons of comedy. So like he wrote Animal House. He wrote Meatballs, mm. Stripes. I've never seen Meatballs either. Back to that. School. I mean, he wrote like so much shit here. It's like crazy. Yeah. We need to get into his oeuvre. Yeah. Um, well, like I've never seen Stripes or Meatballs. Stripes like, is pretty funny. I mean, where have like, I been? Kind of like kooky, but um, and 
and like and like we said, he was like an actor too. You know, like you mentioned Orange County, he was like the dad. Yeah, in that. he was in the dad and knocked up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Same. Oh, multiplicity. The one with Michael Keaton's like clones. a billion people clones himself. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so I fucking loved Harold Ramis. He's awesome. Um. But what else I gonna say about this? Uh. Okay. So my memories about this movie is that yes. Uh. As when we covered European Vacation, that one's always stood out for me. And I realized it was because it was really my first boobs I saw on TV. European Vacation, when the German girl's like, eh. And this one, I never have seen it, a video of it. I've only seen the TV yeah. version. Yeah. So when this popped up and it said it was rated R, I was like, yeah. what? That's crazy. Well. Like, this is a family film. Mm-hmm. And then I'm watching this movie that clearly is like, you know, the real version. And there's, it's very inappropriate. There's swears everywhere. And there are boobs. Well, what was it? It was just one boob. One boob. One boob what? is enough boobs. Well, boobs of boob. Beverly D'Angelo's yeah. bras. Oh yeah, uh, nice breasts. Nice, nice breasts. breasts. Uh, but yeah, I was I was shocked. But yeah, lots of the, lots of f words. Lots yeah. of fucking. Um, which I just don't ever see hear come out of Clark's mouth because we always watch all these movies right. on on TV. Anyways. Oh, definitely. So Curse yeah, it's, yeah, you forget how much is edited out. Yeah. On, on and TV. in general, like super inappropriate subject matter, right? So this is like not a movie for children, like at all, despite there being like kids in it. But, but we um, watched it. We did, like very young, and again goes back to. <laughs> Our parents literally, and I think I've said this many times, I cannot remember one instance in my life where I was like, Dad, I want to watch this movie. I don't remember ever mm-hmm. hearing, nope, you can't watch that. You're not old enough. Never, mm-hmm. ever in a million years, which I think is yeah. awesome. But don't you think that <laughs> part of that is also that like they didn't know? Like dad like <laughs> fell, know. our dad fell asleep within like five seconds of putting on the television. Yeah. So maybe he missed all the inappropriate parts. Mom wasn't around watching this with us probably but like, i don't but remember even if like inappropriate stuff came on the tv like it would have been a change channel moment or like anything like that again if you're seeing this on tv it's not going to be edited out i remember all that stuff, one so. instance where i was like playing with my barbies <laughs> in the living room and dad was like watching some racy movie on television and there was like a woman like getting undressed or something and like stabbed a guy uh, like an old guy in a wheelchair i don't know if you know what movie that is, let me know. <laughs> but anyways, our mom came in the room and was like, you're letting her watch this? Oh. And like, I wasn't really watching it. But then I was like, what's happening? And then I was like, oh. And so that's the only time I remember that. But I was, pr- I must have been pretty young. Like I mean, six or my seven. favorite example is I watched Boogie Nights with my dad, not on TV. Or if it was, it was like on HBO. So this would have been like 1997 or eight. So, I mean, I would have been like 14 maybe. And being like, okay. It, and not... Like, again, as Sweetie said, like, our dad was, like, a passed out guy on any sort of, like, watching any sort of programs. Like, you're surprised, like, he saw any movie at all because he fell asleep, like, all I know. the fucking time. That's what I was thinking about today. But he had amazing recall for movies. So I'm like, what? The- <laughs> this is, like, osmosis. Maybe, yeah, or, like, when you're sleeping and you and you hear yeah. the, something you it's like, remember. he still knew. But he, so either if he came home and he would, like, fall asleep at the, um, in, like, in his recliner. And he always had a recliner. That guy was, like, reclined. I never remember him like not having a recliner. <laughs> and then any other time you watch a movie, same thing. As soon as he was like vertical, uh, wait, yeah. Horizontal. Horizontal. Damn, I always do that. I have like a dyslexia <laughs> like when it the comes horizon. to Yes. Horizontal. Whenever he gets horizontal, he falls asleep. Shout out to my boyfriend who is the same way. Um, it's crazy. So like I'm surprised dad like saw any movies at all, but apparently he did. And I think he did like this movie. I think he enjoyed the family caper movies, yeah. at, which people, you know, why, like Sweetie said, many parts of this movie does not age well. Correct. Um, very NPC. One part is extremely racist. Um, but the overall message of like going on fa- uh, family vacations and like all the shit that can happen and just like your interactions and stuff. Obviously, this is like out of control and like over the top, but everyone can relate to it, which I think why everyone thinks this movie is like pretty funny mm-hmm. um, in general. So, Who's in this movie? Chevy Chase. Chevy, Chevy or Chevy, guys? The, <laughs> Chevy. the the discussion continues. It's not the car. I know, right? I just think I just I, I always pause in my head. Yeah. Uh, yep. Good old Clark good old, Griswold. Good old Chevy. Uh, Probably his most famous role. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I would say. I mean, he had a couple that like other people like Fletch and yeah. um, Caddyshack. Even I think are are big ones. But uh, yeah, Beverly D'Angelo as Ellen, hot hot Bev. Um, She's, I think, 
She could be a model. She's she gorgeous. She's, yeah. That's what doesn't make sense with the whole yeah. Christy Brinkley thing. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying this, like, we'll get into this obviously with the synopsis and how there's this, like, hot late woman who keeps in this, like, Corvette or whatever that is who keeps coming into the picture and Clark's like, ooh, ah, and like, whatever. Okay, buddy, your wife is fucking hot. Like, look around yeah. you. And she's also pretty cool and puts up with your shit. So, yeah. like, what you tone doing? it down. This yeah. is the reason why I hate, like, Clark Griswold, like, most of all. <laughs> Um, I mean, he has a lot of like personality flaws, but in every movie, there's like this bullshit of like mm-hmm. him trying to like, like uh, not necessarily cheat on his wife, but I don't know, like just give in to like yeah, some kind just of be like excited about like hot women, right? You're, like you annoying. have a hot woman, and it's not that you like should ever cheat on your wife, even if they were ugly yeah. or a pain in the butt or whatever. Like you shouldn't, no matter what. But like, make the wife a little bit uglier. I don't know. <laughs> Or, like, why even have that part at all? I, I don't, don't know. know. Like, what, what is he? Jay-Z? Like, come on. Like, like what a weirdo. I don't know if they're just trying to say that, like, that's how all men get. And that's all, like, they are. Or something. I guess. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. Like, Clark. Anyway. He's a schmuck. Uh, uh, so the kids, Rusty and Audrey. So if you are familiar with this franchise, you'll know that the it's a new Rusty Audrey every time, which mm-hmm. is kind of funny if you think about it. Because you're like... I guess the kids grow up, but they always are kind of that age. So you're like, okay. Mm, except for, yeah, Vegas, they're definitely grown up. But, yeah. yeah. But not under, not over 21, though. They're like. Right. Yeah. Just on, yeah. Yeah. 18. But they're always different, right? Yeah. So um, this one is, uh Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> we always mess this up, too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Who was in Weird Science Breakfast Club. Who's the Dexter guy? <laughs> Michael, Michael C. Hall. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So we got it. C in there. Um, yeah. So he's great. I'm going to be honest here. My favorite Rusty. Wait, but then what? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, but who's Anthony Edwards? I was like, just kidding. ER. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, my favorite Rusty. Your favorite Rusty. Of all the Rusties. Of all the Rusties in the world. Yeah. He's a good Rusty. He's, he's like, hilarious. He's hilarious. Um, He's not, I mean, I, the European vacation one is like, he's so gross. I hate him so much. It's like an Ewok. He's like stupid, rusty beret and his, ah, and his braces. Rusty. I just like can't, I can't handle it. But yeah, he, Anthony is, is cute, but like uh, still annoying. He's the perfect, like annoying little brother. He has weird, like, um, he like idolizes his dad yeah. in this. And That's you're like, my favorite part happening? is the interactions with him and Clark or his dad it's or like Chevy Chase. Oh my an God. Interesting time where it's he like hasn't funny. figured out that his dad is an idiot. Yes. So it, I don't know. It's, it's pretty funny. And then Audrey, I don't know what, that, I don't know who that is. Like oh, Dana, Dana something. something. Yeah. 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 She's just like so flat in this to me. I just definitely not my favorite Audrey. The Porky Pig Audrey in European Vacation, also not. My favorite Audrey is really Juliette Lewis in the Christmas one. I know you've wow. never seen that, but she is hilarious oh, yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah. And it's like she so yeah. pissed off teenager. It's like amazing. But in the Christmas one, they twist it so Rusty is actually younger mm. and like she's older. Who's Rusty in the Christmas one? Rusty in the Christmas one is the guy from um, Big Bang Theory. What's his name? The guy, the which which character? The not the not Sheldon Leonard Leonard. Leonard. Huh. Yeah, wow, I know. Oh wow, like as a tiny tiny little kid. So Weird. and Weird. he's like pretty good in that. But in that one, he basically thinks his dad's full of shit. Like he doesn't. So it's interesting how they like change that. He's evolved. For each one. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's life. I think too. You're like yeah. love your parents, and you're like you are a bunch of nut bars yeah. and hate you. Um, yeah, the kids are still like very innocent in this yeah. one. I feel like that kind of like doesn't last through the the franchise, yeah. which is fine because it like totally makes sense. Um, and then like a bunch of like rando, like I said, like kind of SCTV alums or like John, comedy alums. John Candy, yeah. uh, big cameo there at the end. So good stuff. Eugene Levy, just some Brian Doyle Murray, Brian the cameo Doyle of all cameos. Murray. <laughs> God, he is like the cameo king. Um, <laughs> He is, you know, obviously Bill Murray's brother. Um, and this one looks like really a more like him than he ever does, I would say. Um, f- just like the owner of that like crappy campground place that they like stay in. Um, I'm trying to think if anyone else like big. I don't think so. Christy. Oh, Christy Brinkley's first movie is like a little like cherub babe. She hasn't really like filled out her model face yet. I mean, has nice legs, but it's like kind of has like nice baby gams. face. Nice gams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like freaking, I mean, this movie is fucking funny. And I mean, it's obviously like so dated. You're talking about 1983. So 
uh, there's technology, guys. Oh, there is. There's computers. Giant, like, box computers. <laughs> like, horrible graphics. There's, like, a Pac-Man, like, video game. And, like, whatever that one, like, like the ship flew around with. Um, but obviously, like, no cell phones, no internet. And, I mean, is it dated in the sense that, like, um, you know, no, a lot of the problems that they have are a result of, like, we would not have now because of the internet and because of cell phones and stuff? Think about mm, it, guys. Maybe. Yeah. But some are not. I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, now, GPS, would getting you know lost, Disney you get World lost. was closed? Well, right. It'd probably be, like, an, a widely spread... Or you couldn't buy tickets. Thing. Right. Uh, yeah. They're, yeah, you're right. It'd probably be different now. Does Disney World close? <sighs> well, but you still get into all kinds of shenanigans when you're when you're on the road. Yeah. So I'm sure it's the the newer one is has its own fair. Right. That's why I kind of like, like to see that and just like see now that we have all these, mm-hmm. you know, tools that you can use, whether it's a cell phone or GPS when you get lost. I mean, obviously their stuff is like all these things that happen on a road trip and we'll go into it, but like. A lot of that stuff is erased. I'm, t- I'm telling you guys, people bitch about smartphones, but like we're damn lucky that we have like that, that technology. That yeah. technology now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's start this up. Start it up. Holiday roll. Oh, holiday roll. Oh, I'm surprised it took us that long to sing that. Oh, I love that song. It's by, um, I told the sweetie this, um, because I'm a huge Fleetwood Mac fan. That song is by, uh, written and performed by Lindsey Buckingham of Fleetwood Mac. Pretty cool. And he has another song at the end credits, too. So pretty cool they got him to sing original jam, Lindsey. Go, Lindsey. He's kind of a brat, so glad it worked out. All right, it's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah, sweeties. I think I broke my nose. I stabbed my brain. I just got my period. (laughs) Name that scene. Uh, when they crash. But does she think she gets her period? Like she's, this is the first time she's gotten her period and she thinks that getting your period means getting like thrown No, I think it was just the like seat? the jolt of it like made her period come. It was like so violent. But it wasn't her first one. No. Okay. I mean, I don't know how old Audrey's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I had questions. I had questions. Anyways, Clark W. Griswold is a father, a scientist-ish person is his job he makes food additives yes um and good, good he, memories well really i remember good. that from the vegas in the vegas one there's a whole scene about that where remember then, he like brings like the milk in the oh, bag and he's like i finally did it and that's in, why they have money to go to vegas in the christmas one they like go to his office mm. and that's like a part oh, okay, okay. So uh, it's the summer, and he's all excited because he's taken his family on a vacation. Two weeks, baby. Road trip to Wally World, which I guess is supposed to be Disney World. Um, but it's like a, a big theme park centered around these cartoon characters kind of thing, kind of deal. So uh, Clark's, you know, he's going and he's got to train in the old station wagon for a sports wagon, which I'm unclear what the difference is between a station wagon and what the sports wagon would have looked like. I mean, I like. think it was supposed to be a nicer color. They had a CB radio. Ooh, remember CB radio? That could have been handy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So instead, they get the Metallic P family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> no, P. Like, no. it's the color of a P. Oh, I thought it was Metallic Pete. What? No, it's, it's the color like of a pea, pea like pea, pea soup. No, I think I thought it was peat. Like it's pea. Pea. I think it's peat. If you have thoughts, <laughs> <laughs> if you folks have thoughts, you come at us on, on Twitter no, at the Sweetie Club. No, it's the color pea. of a pea, like pea green. Okay. Pea green okay. anyway, fridge. Anyway, butt ugly station wagon, guys. <laughs> get it right or pay the price. So they, have, they take that, so they're already kind of like pissed about that. They go off on their road trip, so they depart from Chicago. Uh, you know, the first couple, we'll just talk about this in terms of like things that go wrong, I guess. But, uh, first one, I guess they get lost in St. Louis. Um, so they kind of go to like the bad, the bad part of town. Their hubcats get stolen. They somehow miraculously find their way back on the, on the freeway. Um, then they like, uh, do a couple of other random things where like nothing really bad happens, but then they stop at Ellen's cousin's who is married to Eddie, who is Randy Quaid. Oh, yeah, Randy Quaid. Um, Randy Quaid. Oh, we forgot Randy Quaid. I mean, 
it's probably for the best. He's, <laughs> he's a whack job these days, as listen to our um, Independence Day podcast, I think, yeah. is when we talked about that. Yeah, he's he, like crazy. In the trivia, they're like, Randy Quaid has not been seen since 2010 after like him and his wife, like, forged a credit card or something so crazy weird. yeah I read, there's an article in vanity fair about it i remember and i was like what the fuck um so yeah they go to visit them and um who should live there but old aunt edna who's this like ancient aunt of ellen who clark hates um and unfortunately the uh eddie and his his what's the the wife's name her cousin Catherine. Catherine have neglected to tell the griswolds that they're actually going to be toting um, Aunt Edna back to Phoenix with them on the way to Wally World. And they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I mean, they only have a station wagon, they so it's not also, like that's like a ton of room. Right. And they also have to bring her crazy, her dog, crazy dog who just bites people and is scary. How does he interact with Edna? I don't know. They never show that relationship. <laughs> of the, like of Edna and the dog? Yeah, they, they don't. They never the show her. The dog's dinky. She guys. always makes people care, like, uh, carry him on the leash yeah. or whatever his name is dinky dinkums dinkums um, he's a real asshole but he's he'd be yeah, cute if he dog. wasn't like a snarl or a dog is that it, every, it was like a i think it's a mix like yeah. a lab mix of some kind but um yeah so so here's where things start getting rocky um they get into like a couple accidents you know either clark's fucking falling asleep at the wheel or disregarding close road signs and almost yeah. killing the family several times i mean basically it comes down to Clark has no street smarts, right? Like, he has no business, like, leading a family on vacation because he just, like, doesn't... He's just an idiot, mm -hmm. you know? It's it's not like he's, like, dumb, but he just, like, doesn't think about things, he you know? Is, and, like, though. I don't know. Is, like, too... Cons I don't even know. Oblivious? I don't even know, like, what the, the word is. So, yeah. So, like, all this shit happened. So, they ended up, um, you know, I guess, like, they were folding the map and they missed, like, the road closure signs. Mm -hmm. So, they're, like, driving along anyway and they unfortunately have to be... In happened to be in the desert and they crashed through like road closed sign and like the car goes flying like 50 feet or something crazy and like all the wheels fucking fall mm -hmm. off or get flat tires so then they're stuck in the desert so he has to like hike through the desert and gets like crazy delirious and they finally find a gas station and fortunately like the car already got picked up by a couple indians like on horseback and then a guy in a on, with on a, a camel, camel? whoa um <laughs> i actually see that in the usa desert you know <laughs> Anyway, so they, you know, get all the car fixed, but apparently, uh, unfortunately, they totally get fleeced and they are, take all of their money, the guy who's, who's fixed the car, which is unfortunate because, you know, this is 1983, the era of cash. <laughs> they had credit cards. They did. But unfortunately, Ellen's fell off the truck. That was one of the early little things that went mm -hmm. wrong and they cancel all of them and then like his ends up being canceled too. So they what don't even have any plastic. What a mess. Yeah. So they end up like... Um, Audrey has like $40 worth of babysitting money so they're like going off of that Edna has like 11 cents unfortunately when they're trying to figure out if Edna has any money they also figure out that Edna is dead she dead she real dead Aunt Edna R.I.P. good thing because you know she was really great and on uh, poor Clark there on the whole family really um, oh and the dog died too and the dog died too because Clark tied it up on the bumper and forgot and then drove away um so they bring dead edna to her son's house which is in phoenix which is where they were normie going. and he's not home he's doing whatever so they leave her outside in the rain like with a like a tarp over her and her purse on her lap and they're like okay see ya they like need to keep going to wally world but uh ellen and the kids are like let's just go home this is awful and like yes that is awful <laughs> like i would not want to go to wally world whatever but they pull through and well, Clark is in this horrible speech about how they're all <laughs> fucked in the head. Gets like pretty dark um, and forces his family to go on. Yes, <laughs> true. So they go on. They arrive to Wally World to a sparse parking lot. First one's there. All excited. There's this great montage uh, scene of them running slow motion. To Chariots of Fire. Yep. <laughs> dun, 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 they get dun, to the dun, gate. Have you seen that movie? No. It's a bicycling movie, right? No. Running. They're running. I think it's they're bicycling. runners. No. That's, not, that's why they always play it when someone's running. Because it was the guys running on the beach. Pretty sure it's bicycling. I'm going to look it up. Pretty sure it's running. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> what about me? A dollar. <laughs> this is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Track athletes. <laughs> you know what? Wait, was I thinking of Pee Wee Herman in the bike race? 
They That's play what I was that thinking. Song of. during that? Don't they? No, no, I don't think so. In the beginning, I don't think so. Dun, 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 dun. You're right. Two British <laughs> track athletes, one a determined Jew and the other a devout Christian, compete in the 1924 Olympics. Ooh, oh, this looks good. <laughs> it's a classic. I should read it. Okay, guys, Chariots of Fire is about right. running. I'm wrong. She gives, owes me a dollar. A dollar later. Um, so they get to the to the gate, and what do they find? Parks closed. Sorry, folks. Parks closed for two weeks due to repairs. Funny though, no one's there repairing anything. So, is that a lot of bullshit? Yeah. Or who knows? what? But they're so mad. They're so upset. Clark like loses it. Goes to the sporting goods store across, like down back in town across the street. Buys a BB gun and pits, puts it in a little paper bag. Goes up to the security desk, holds the security guy hostage, basically, and is like, "You're gonna take us on these rides, or I'm gonna shoot you." And so he has to, he has to agree. So then they have a nice little montage of riding all the rides with the security guard, John Candy, and unfortunately, the SWAT team then shows up along with Mr. Roy Wally himself. <laughs> And who looks like Walt Disney uh, <laughs> or, or Walt his brother, brother, Roy Disney. Roy. And uh, it's uh, things will go OK because it's only a BB gun. And they like tell uh, Roy the story of like this horrible vacation. And all they wanted to do was get to Wally Wally World. So he feels bad. So he lets him off. And then th- do they ride more rides together? Uh, yeah, well, it's just like one um snapshot of like everyone so like all the oh, cops yeah, yeah. and everything on the roller coaster so everyone rides around yeah. so yeah so it's good all so in all fun. a good day la di da la di da so vacation's over and yeah. uh whew, I bad mean, vacation he good kept ending. saying like in the beginning of this movie he kept being like relaxing vacation I'm like what <laughs> there's no vacation no that you take on relaxing. a road trip yeah. that would be relaxing exactly like <laughs> hello Clark exactly. hello and we should know because we took a lot of family road trips a lot of family vacations yeah we had like a setup in the van of our shit we had our our things that we took with us we had our pillows we knew where to put the pillow like we were ready so we were the ultimate road trip family because here's the deal we were at a family of five right and as you know in the, the beginning of this movie there's a lot of talk about why don't we just fly why don't we just fly and i think the griswolds can actually afford it that's the thing there's four of them it sounds like um clark has like a pretty good job he makes pretty good money um our family, not the case. We really had five. We had five people. We really couldn't afford it, and it just wasn't going to work out. And our dad was pretty thrifty, so he's like, you know what? I'm I'm fucking driving. So everywhere we went, we drove. So we drove to Florida three times, hmm. four times. It felt like more. It felt I think like it maybe it a lot. four times. But Florida, South Carolina. Yeah. Um, so not only Florida, but like basically all up and down the Eastern yeah. Seaboard. DC, DC, like all that. And our parents, our grandparents lived in um, Naples, Florida. So like pretty far down the the Florida peninsula. And um, that was a reason to go. So we would go every other year. So that was like pretty fun. We'd miss two weeks of school. Woo! Um, You know, I remember like, sorry, one. So we would have, we'd take February vacation and then we'd take an extra one, Mm -hmm. I think before. Mm -hmm. And we'd had to get all our homeworks. We'd like bring all our homework and stuff, which like looking back, I'm like, who the fuck cares what I missed? And like. 10 like five days of fourth grade like who cares like what just the hell show. did you learn like it was so serious you're like oh my god and i'd like bring all these assignments like I know. poor teacher had to like figure out like what you're we gonna learn and all this stuff i don't know crazy <laughs> they did. um they had a plan they planned things. oh yeah it's lesson planning and luckily we already had a minivan so mm-hmm. that was like already baked into the plan and sweetie here was right i mean we were just so used to that shit we'd wake up like super early in the morning the day we left i remember it would still be dark We'd all get in the car. I think we've talked about this on another podcast because I got my own seat because I would fight. Like, my older sister didn't like me, so, like, I couldn't sit with her. And Andre and I could have sat together. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't Liz get her own know. seat? We talked about this several times. Like, That's why didn't you get your own room on the first floor and Liz and I were upstairs? Like, it doesn't make any just sense. like the golden child um, or something. Yeah, so, yeah, it was me and Liz in the back and Emily and, like, the sweetie in the smaller seat the second seat but but yeah, yeah i had my we had our walkmans we had our books on our tape books. we had our books i, I could read stuffed i could read in the spot. car so, so could i, I when i was, when I was little and uh yeah so it's just a good time yep. my we, pillow i had to bring a certain pillow yeah. with me put it up on the window yeah. snooze is great yeah like we always said we always went to cracker barrels so my dad was like obsessed with cracker barrel and it's like they didn't have them like basically above virginia 
like when we were growing up. So like once we hit Virginia, like the started to be the <laughs> South guys, uh, crack barrels would hit and that's where we stopped oh yeah and then like we'd get stuff at the store and like that was really fun because the store was really Mm -hmm. fun and it did feel like we were actually in like a different place because like you grew up in the northeast and then you're kind of like in the south as a little kid you're like wow this does feel really different i remember there was you know no non uh well there's non-smoking and smoking sections but in the cracker barrel it was basically like one big room but you just like stood on the other side if it was non-smoking like what the didn't really work didn't really work i know crazy but it was so, it was really fun. And luckily, like, we honestly had almost no, like, I don't remember any Griswold-like family experience. Not really. I mean, just issues, the, right? the the Florida trip where I spilled the iced tea. Right. Uh, on the, on both Liz and on the floor and the, uh, the uh, Vistana Resort on the carpet with the big picture. So, I mean, incidences they here and there, but yeah, nothing on the Griswold level. Yeah, no car troubles. We never got lost. We had the the AAA trip tech. Do you remember that when you would like everyone had AAA, right? And then you'd go to AAA and be like, "I'm going on a vacation from here to here." And then they would give you this this map that was like a flip book essentially, and you just keep flipping over to the next page with it all highlighted the whole yeah. route. And like when you're going to um, Disney or Florida, it's basically like whatever that is, 90 or whatever that goes all the way down. But then like the map would open up to like each city. So if you wanted like a little bit, again, pre-internet, like, you know, all you had was maps. Mm. All you had was maps. But my favorite job was doing the triptych and like flipping the pages as we went through them. That was mm. fun. I liked that. I remember one we went on, it was we went to McDonald's for like a bunch of lunches and I was able to collect like every toy of the Happy Meal because we went so many times. Which toy was it? So it was the, di- remember the show Dinosaurs? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. But we couldn't, We but the only one the baby. we couldn't get was the baby one and then one we, day we found, we found it in the parking yes. lot and we thought it was like the luckiest day of our lives even though it was like all gross and oh, like man. used. We are like, yes! Oh my God, it was like meant to oh be. Oh my God. But, but yeah, yeah, that was good times, good times. Yeah, we had a blast. So um, anyways, love a good road trip. Yeah. I haven't been on one in a long time. I went on one with my um, college friends in 2008 and we did uh, Boston to San Diego and we did like all the way down um, to Memphis and then west from there. That was fucking crazy. Um, Again, not really a Griswold experience, but that was insane. I mean, we did it in one week because, like, a lot of us didn't have um, we didn't have paid vacation. Like, I was still temping, and I think my other friend was too. So we could only take a week off, and we just like booked it. Like, you should not be driving to fucking California in a week. It was insane. <laughs> we were so tired, but it was really, really fun. And that's oh, and then I've been I've been to Boston to Texas a couple of times because my best friend lives down there, and I've helped her like drive her car. So. I mean, it's fun. I don't, I don't mind it. If you have a good person, good people with you, mm-hmm. you know, obviously friends and family are like a different situation. Um, and, you know, have stuff to do. The license plate game. Do you remember that? We were like serious about the license plate game. <laughs> yeah, it was I fun. I was hard. It was fun. Um, someone I saw, a, I've been seeing a lot of like Colorado, Texas license plates recently. And I'm like, damn, if only we had you're on the road trip but yeah Yeah. i remember we saw hawaii once and we were like did it yeah my friend we won the um, license plate i saw my friend emily on instagram oh that's who it was yeah i was like someone posted someone saw alaska in a parking lot she's like if i was playing the like the license plate game i'd be like so stoked because that one's like so hard to find i remember we saw hawaii one time and i legitimately flipped out that's what i just said yeah okay yeah it was awesome we were like why how do you how did you get rainbow on it yeah how did they get there fly it ferry (laughs) ferry to to california yeah. Ship it. That's a long I don't ride. know. It's weird. Um, okay, so uh, unless you want to have anything, but I have one thing I want to start with, and then we can start, move from there. Start it up. Okay, so big thing about this movie, which I didn't even realize until a couple weeks, uh, a couple days ago, when I was talking to someone that we were doing this movie, and they're like, "Oh, did you know that like they reshot the whole ending?" And I was like, "Excuse me, baking powder." Jack. She's talking to her boyfriend's father, yeah. J- Jacko. You're not going to shout out Jacko. Come well, on. Jacko doesn't listen. To the podcast. Well, Kathy does. Kathy does. Yeah. Anyway, so talking to my boyfriend's father, and he's telling me that um, the whole ending was reshot. So <clears throat> they had this whole ending. They did. They showed it in theaters as they do. They do a test screening, right? And they want to see, you know, how how do people react to certain how do you scenes? Get to go or to whatever. a test screening. Seriously, I want to go to a test screening. I want to make the that. rules. I want to make know. the what happens. We would be so someday. Yeah, someday. We would be the best at that. Yeah. Anyone? Call me. Call me. Who's Stevie this, Spills. This, yeah. Call me. Who's a podcast who does that kind of casting or whatever you call it? Get us in there. Probably need to go to LA, be in LA or yeah, something. Whatever. You know? 
So anyway, so they re- they reshot the ending because the ending that they had was horribly received by the audience. So the ending of the real movie, you know, has them going to Wally World. It's closed, and then um, they hold up, you know, the John Kerry and D character making all the rides. Blah blah blah. We talked about it. So the the ending of the first go around of this movie. Um, kind of actually mimics the short story by John Hughes that I did read um, and has Clark go to Roy Wally's house and hold him up and kind of similar to the Christmas one I've ever seen that one where he like gets his boss and he like ties him up and he brings him you know by gunpoint so it's kind of like that and then in the the um, so then um, they he gets arrested and then there's also a part where the Christy Brinkley character is actually Roy Wally's daughter and she sees Clark and she's like oh god I know him like let him go so he ends up like le- being arrested but then letting but that's let not go. the original movie that's the story no this is the movie this is what they filmed you, oh I thought you said they just it ended with the thing no, that said it no, was no, no. closed no, no. and then they went home nope so in the trivia so uh-huh. then they um, so they get left home and then they're flying home back to Chicago and then they realize they're on the wrong flight so then Clark ho- hijacks the plane it's like too much stuff going <laughs> on to like in the ending that's why it was not received well so they completely like tossed that out they had a bunch of writers come in Four months later, they shot the new ending. They got John Candy for $1 million. They paid him $1 million for that little role. Okay. Um, at day. this point, like, Anthony Michael Hall had, like, grown three inches. So he was, like, taller than Beverly D'Angelo and, like, all this stuff. Beverly D'Angelo had a whole different hairstyle. If you, like, I noticed that. I was like, yeah. what's going on with that? What's going on with their hair? So, total, like, reshot the ending. Pretty cool. Um, but, like... What do you think about it? I mean, that, like you said, that original ending like is horrible. And apparently there's only like one copy that exists of that ending <laughs> that Chevy Chase has. Oh, my God. I know. She's like Steven Spielberg. Maybe, he'll, maybe he screens it at his, <laughs> at his house. Um, but there is like, so when you watch the credits, there's like photographs of the whole vacation. So it's like they took these photographs mm-hmm. during the vacation. Kind of funny. And then the last photograph is them on an airplane with like the Wally World hats. Mm-hmm. Which I think they were going to use. Um, I mean, it fits anyway because they Have flew to home. Get home. Yeah, um, but I think that was part of the general story of them being on the airplane. But. Yeah, what hijack a plane? Yeah, that's a little. That's, that's a little, little crazy. Because um, like with this, it's like kind of a crime, but like not really. Because he's like a BB gun with the tag still on it, and they just want to ride amusement park rides. So like the stakes aren't that aren't that high. Right. But yeah, I definitely support the the actual ending that they went with works much better much more satisfying um so the parts that always like grossed me out and still do and and do in each of these movies are the cousin eddie parts like so this family is supposed to be very like trashy they're poor because eddie like lost all of his money in the bank or something which you know echoes eerily um a bit of like randy quaid's real life (laughs) i guess um, but I just always find that family like so repulsive oh, well. and it's like they're supposed to be and they get su- worse yeah, every they're movie they're supposed to and they get worse every movie but so it's funny in this one Jane Krakowski is the the daughter and she's like little and it's hilarious but like so they yeah so like for instance they use certain like um, like white trash jokes like oh I make out with my dad and like gross well, say that line because it's like pretty disturbing well, so Vicky the, the girl is like I, I'm French kiss boys and Audrey's like big deal everyone does that and she's like but my dad says I'm the best at it and you're like ew like I didn't like is that supposed to be funny? Like, I, I can't know. imagine that being funny in the 80s. Right. That's disgusting. Was it? But is it, is it just funny because they're making fun of that, like, exactly. that white inbred, trash, inbred, inbred kind of, kind of thing? Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, that doesn't age well. Um, and then the, like, bro- the, bro- the brother teaches, like, Rusty how to, like, jerk off or whatever, even though I'm like, how do you know, not know how to <laughs> jerk off by okay, now? How old do you think the kids are supposed to be? <sighs> Middle school? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I guess. Yeah. I mean, boys start whacking, jerking off at like age four. Like, the, the, they figure it out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know I mean, what Rusty's like doing, but. They're pretty close in age. They're I feel like they're an Irish twin situation. They have to be like a year apart, right? So maybe like one's in eighth grade, one's in seventh grade or something. I don't know. But they, they do seem like kind of grown mm. up. But definitely, I don't think high school. No. Um, but yeah. But. I yeah, think. but yeah, yeah. That scene, the vi- the Vegas one grosses me out the most because Eddie like cooks meat oh, on rocks, on the rock. no, and the then chicken, and yeah. then Rusty gets sick, <laughs> yeah. and, 
Ellen's like, we're sorry about the tablecloth. Rusty's never reacted to chicken like that before or something. A little Ethan Embry. Well, and then the, I feel like the Christmas one is so nasty too because they have this disgusting dog that like spits everywhere. And then like Eddie is just like, peeing and they have that big that trailer oh you've never seen it it's like it's bad it's bad man like eddie is is the most disgusting character like i really do not find him funny like at all i'm just like grossed out by him and it's well it's like tragic. in the vegas one when he takes clark to the leg reject casino <laughs> with all the weird games and the gross buffet with the leg animal feet and the like blue macaroni oh my god I get to that i'll part. never forget that <laughs> Uh, it's so gross. Anyways, so yeah, so that part always st- sticks out to me. And then, of course, the, the dinky, the dog, the yeah. dinky dog part. Um, so even though Dinky is like a terrible dog, and I'm glad, I appreciate they make him like a terrible character. Of course. <laughs> because if he wasn't, this would obviously be more traumatic. But it was still traumatic to me, who, as an animal lover, and especially when I was little, like deeply obsessed with animals. Um, just the fact, I think it's just the idea and they don't show any of, of this happening. You don't like hear a dog like crying or or anything like that. It's just the, after they get pulled over the cops, like I'm going to go pick up the carcass. Like he, I reckon he probably kept up with you for a mile before like he lost it. And so like little old me in my head is like thinking of the scenarios of this. I'm like, what if we tied Sunny up to the car and forgot and she had to try to chase after us and then die. So, like so sad. Two things about that. So in the um, John Hughes story, the dog's like body is still there and he like describes it like oh to very God. detail of it like splayed out no. and this big blood trail behind it. <laughs> Like very like ugh, awful. I was reading it the other day, and then in the trivia it said that Harold Ramis got all this fan mail after with people being like, "Wow, like I'm glad you put that in the movie. I've totally done that." What? Yes. Okay. Many people what forgot they tied the their fuck? dog to a bumper and just like dragged it. Awful. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, that's horrifying. That part always horrified me. Yeah. It still does to this day. And even though you hate Aunt Edna, you can't help but feel for her when she's like Dinks. upset and crying. Dinky. Yeah, like, ugh. It was like her own, only like love in the world. Yeah. Sad. Um, and then lastly, and I, Sweetie has a similar memory of this, but the scene where Edna dies and they decide to like put her on the, the roof of the car and drive through the city. Instead of like lying the body down and like tying it up like that way they sit her up like on a suitcase <laughs> so it's obviously a body like a person yeah. sitting under a with tarp her purse with on her, her purse lap. on her lap <laughs> and it's just like so it's such an it's just an eerie scene because yes. it's like raining it's nighttime yeah. there's this human shape on top of the car. I mean you never see her dead body really I mean you see it like just it just looks like she's sleeping right and then like Ellen takes her pulse and is like she's dead and then everyone like freaks out and all the kids are like oh my god Audrey's like the de- a dead body breathed on me I'm like okay she did. wasn't breathing um, and the kids obviously freak out so there's that like thing of like just people freaking out about being dead bodies though like it's not gonna hurt you mm. um, she's dead um, f- yeah crazy um, what was I gonna say yeah I, I agree like I just feel like that image of her on the top of the car is just like seared into my brain and just very mm-hmm. spooky and spooked out as like a little kid for sure. And again, like, you don't feel bad. I mean, they do such a good job of making Aunt Edna such a horrible, miserable character that there's no sense of, like, oh, poor lady, because she's horrible. Mm-hmm. But, man, that's bad. Um, and most people, and yes, would have turned their vacation around. I have this around. other memory, but I guess it's not this movie. But what movie is this where he's, like, zoning out and then the car, like, slides under that's the big the truck? That's the Christmas one. Okay. So, oh, I love that. So part. I think I like have it's seen so it, funny. or I must have seen like parts of it. Because yeah. why do I remember that? Yeah. Like if I, you know, if well, I say like, there's a lot of driving between that one. Well, that's the only driving scene in that one, really. But then this yeah. one, there's so much driving. But this one, he falls asleep like oh eight my god, times. it's so dangerous. And like the guy doesn't know anything that happens. He like can't brake softly. He has to like slam on the brakes, and then skids like off the fucking road. Like dude, and the, what like, is your problem? When he falls asleep, the car's like jostling everywhere and like hitting things, and no one's waking up. It's what I, these are the I, heaviest. Sleepers. I didn't really remember the first time you fell asleep and um, that's in the, the John Hughes like story too and it's pretty funny but um, I didn't remember in this in the movie and it's like pretty funny because they go through like a whole town they go through like sections yeah. of town they go through people's backyards like they just like narrowly miss people it's so funny man yeah that's great um, and then 
another um, scene that's like pretty, um, you know, definitely not PC now. And, you know, I get it. Like this is National Lampoon and it's supposed to be satire and it's supposed to be crazy. And it's, you know, it's not going to be like, you know, the most PC thing. You shouldn't have to worry about that. Right. Mm -hmm. But even Harold Ramis says the scene when they get lost in St. Louis and it they get into the wrong side of town. There's like gunshots and shit. And then they pull over to ask for directions. And it's all these black people. And then they proceed to kind of like tell them the guy kind of is distracting Clark. So like the rest of the guys can like take the hubcaps and um, graffiti. The car is like pretty bad. <laughs> and even Harold Ramos is like, I either would not have, I would have taken that out or basically shot it differently. So it wasn't as racist. Ugh. So yeah. not great. Yep, another another scene that has not has not aged well. Yeah, not at all. Um, so then, yeah, and then back to the uh, the Christy Brinkley part. So I had a, a theory until the end that um, she was just a dream woman that Clark was imagining. Because I was like, why is she everywhere? Like, why is she Rucker Rucker Howard in in um the Hitchhiker or the Hitchhiker like following them everywhere like a stalker like. Why does she keep showing up? She's always dressed in white. She's always in the same outfit. She never like interacted with anyone else up until like the pool scene. So I was like, she's not real. That's she's a figment of Clark's imagination. He's just he's just imagining it. But she's not. She's real because at the the scene where she's at the hotel and they jump in the pool together, everyone sees them in the pool and um, Ellen gets upset and blah blah blah. Yeah. But there goes that. It's not there goes sense. that theory. <laughs> but all the signs were there. So like I. I should be right. But um, one scene that is so weird is when <laughs> Clark sees her like at a park. They're eating their like picnic basket and he's like sees her and then like takes his sandwich over to a tree and she's um, drinking something. She's, there's like um, uh, a soda truck or something pulls up next to her and they're like <laughs> drinking sprites out of like a glass bottle. And she's like doing like a dance while she's drinking the Sprite. And then Clark like does a dance with his sandwich. And like that's how they're communicating through like this weird like sexy dance. It's so weird. With like but food I just, and stuff. Okay. I but here's funny. the thing is like why are women attracted to Clark Griswold? Exactly. Is my question. Because that's like his like fantasy and the fantasy of all men like that. They're like oh yeah, like I bullshit. can still get these like hot ladies. He's like, Bullshit. and he's like not a good flirt at all. And no, he's an I idiot. Just, and like the way, because like Rusty asked him about him. Because the worst part about the pool scene is that the kids see it, mm. and like very sadly, Audrey is like, "Our mom and dad gonna get divorced mm. now," and like that sucks. That's sad. Yeah, that is not a good memory that you want to leave your kids like at all. That like, oh yeah, dad was sl- like swimming naked in a pool with this <laughs> hot woman on vacation, and like the poor mom is just like trying to get some sleep. Um, it's bullshit. Anyway, so he then he like talks with Rusty and he's like, well, sometimes Russ, like guys get older and they just like have these feelings. And I'm like, what? Fuck it's that. Like- <laughs> okay, so every morning I like put on a radio station from like Apple Music, Apple the radio. And um, lately I've been really into two th- the 2000s radio, which is like any songs from the the 2000s decade um and the song they always love to play is the fucking shaggy song it wasn't me me. um that song is awful like (laughs) what is the concept of that like oh just say it wasn't you like we uh what (laughs) that's that's your excuse to your your poor girlfriend who got you cheating with the girl next door, it wasn't me. Like, fuck you, Shaggy. Um, yeah, men are bullshit. Um, I love singing that song, though. Yeah. So I'm banging in the shower. <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> it was you. I saw, saw you. on my shoulder. Ugh. But the scream's getting louder. Ugh. That was so, my yeah. <laughs> All right, anything else? Um, yeah, I have a bunch of stuff. Well, lay it on us. Um, okay, do you know what a red eye is? Like the plane? No. So remember when they go to the Western bar mm-hmm. and he's like fucking around with the guy and he's like saying all these like horrible oh. names to him and stuff. Well, there's and he's like, like, well, four red eyes. Well, a red eye, there's like a, f- a few things. There's like red eye gravy. There's a red eye is like coffee in a alcoholic drink or something. Well, remember from cocktail? That was also a drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What is it? 
So it is vodka, beer, tomato juice, and a raw mm, egg. Uh-huh. So essentially a bloody a hangover, Mary, but also with beer. Hangover yeah. cure. Hanging the do- hair of the dog. I'm not unclear about what the egg does. I'm sure we talked about this during the, That's the in like cocktail. A couple one. hangover yeah. remedies. I don't know. Protein. Like, gross, Clark. Why would you order that Like at a bar for the kids? Nasty. <laughs> Maybe they, well, because it wasn't that like with the OK Corral or whatever and like Tombstone. Like yeah. maybe it was something from that. Yeah. Sioux City or whatever. Yeah. It was. OK. Um, and these are like my bits of trivia, which are pretty good. Um, OK. So Aunt Edna, the, car- the uh-huh. um, actress, who is like an older actress and I think kind of famous. Um, she um, suffered a real stroke on this movie. That like part of it like so they filmed this in the summer and it was so hot like everywhere they went it was like over 100 degrees like brutal and so this might have like contributed to it but she had a real stroke and then she like couldn't remember anything she did the next like the day before and like lost all of her lines and stuff so she like went to the hospital and then her husband like helped her like work all the next day to like relearn all her lines and then keep filming Yikes. crazy Scary. like I- Edna almost really died <laughs> oh my god it's like fucked up right yeah. Okay, there is a real, well, there's a Wally World water park in Ontario, Canada. Is it based off of this yes. movie, though? Okay, because it it's like, Wally World seems like the not Looney Tunes, but the other, like the Hanna-Barbera kind yeah. of like, like side of things. like a Rocky Bullwinkle Which is Hanna-Barbera, okay. I think. And but, it's, yeah. It's, so the, the they use like a, a combination of like two amusement parks, like a Six Flags and then like something else. Disney so it's not World. really like Disney, though, if you yeah, think about I think it. But like the song and like yeah. the character. Right, right. The way like, they do it and like, yeah, there's yeah. there's a TV show yeah. and like whatever. But the park just seems like a amusement park with like a lot of rides and stuff, which is cool. But I'm telling you, I would not drive 2,500 miles to go no see. No way. I'm not going yeah. 2,500 miles for Six Flags. But there weren't like that many of them. So I get it. Anyway, so it is in Ontario, Canada. Hmm. And they tried to get John Candy to open the park for them. Um, it opened, like, I forgot what they said, like seven years after this movie came mm-hmm. out or something. And they couldn't afford his fee. What John was his fee? Expensive. God. But, like, Wally World couldn't afford it. Sheesh. That would have been pretty funny, though, yeah. if he, like, came in that costume yeah. and, like, was that guy. Um, Kim Cattrall was the original choice for Ellen. Wow. Yeah, that would have been cool. What, what happened? She turned it down? Yeah, she had to make Mannequin instead. No, no, no. But have you seen <laughs> that movie? That movie's crazy. It's we got to do that. Parts of it. And then, uh, question for you, sweetie. Mm-hmm. Clark W. Griswold, Griswold, what does the W stand for? Wendell? <laughs> Mr. Wendell. William? Yeah. I don't know. Wilhelm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Which I think he says said in the that German in one. The, yeah, in the European one. Okay. I think he says that. I'm just that. remembering the like, in European one where they go visit his like German family and they like go to the wrong house because it like six, the number, the was, number like, was flipped uh, around or something. And um, the people just like take them in and feed them and they sleep there yeah. and then they, they leave and they're, and they're like, like, who, who the, the fuck, fuck were they? they? <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. So good. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <sighs> okay, well, so now we're going to ha- switch to a very exciting segment. Uh, if you listen to our last episode or follow us on Instagram or Twitter, um, we have a contest to celebrate our three years where the winner will get a large Marge sent us T-shirt of your color of choice and size. Uh, if you had replied to one of our posts on social media, we entered you into the raffle. We are now going to do that raffle, folks, live on the air by taking a live Instagram, making a live Instagram story thing. Okay, this is big. This is like technology. Wow, it's happening. Okay, are we filming? We've never done a live a live <laughs> thing before. I'm like, what am I fucking? I don't know. We did one once. I don't know. Where okay. okay. All right. We're going live. Up, Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Hey guys, we're live. This is the Large Marge Sentence Podcast. I'm Sweetie with an I E, and I'm Sweetie with a Y, and we're live because we're doing a um, you know drawing, Contest. a live drawing. Um, we had our anniversary last week, and we are giving away a T-shirt because of our three years. Pretty awesome. Three years, yeah. Um, so anyone who commented on our social media um, all our anniversary week, we wrote down your name on a slip of paper 
and we're going to pick it out of a hat, which is like my favorite thing of all time. Sweetie was like, let's just do this like cool um, computer thing where you just like put everyone's names in yeah. and it does it like virtually. Yeah. I'm like, I was just nah. trying to make it easier for you. No, nah. I love the uh, pick out of the hat thing. I don't know. Just she's obsessed. Wild. She's obsessed. Um, so that means, right. do I get to pick? Or yeah, you? of course. You're okay. you're the one obsessed with the the hat. So, all right. Is anyone watching? Has anyone joined our live video? No. No one cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> no one cares about us. Come on. Wow. You know what this hat smells like? Um, our Halloween yes! bags. <laughs> We had these like cool <laughs> Halloween sacks. We weren't like pillowcase kids. We had these like cool. I think we went to the Christmas tree shop or yep. something. These like Halloween like um, potato sacks. Yeah. I think they were with like a Halloween. Like I had a witch I had on a it. You had a pumpkin, and they smelled like a potato sack, but yeah, or like straw, straw, straw. And this hat that we're picking smells out of exactly smells just like, like it. it. I'm glad we had so the name. Weird. That's weird. That's great. Um, oh, we have one person joining. Yes. Oh, we have one people. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so we're picking out this hat. Pretty cool. Who's the winner going to be? Drum roll. I got a winner. I'm going to say it. Okay, the winner of the Large Marge Santos contest is. B Mall. Who's that? Beck Mall? Yeah. B Beck Mall. Yeah. B E C? Yeah. Looks like B Mall. Sorry. <laughs> Beck Mall. I, I went to the B Mall. Who's Beck Mall? I don't know. Beck Mall, you won. Woo! So we'll be DMing you to get you a um, a t shirt. You'll get to pick the size um, and what color you want. There's like a tons of different colors on the T Public site. So cool, cool. Yeah. Congrats. Cool, cool. Thanks for joining the, we'll the, reach out the to contest, you. guys. Maybe we'll do another one soon. I love contests. Hope oh. we can figure out who this is. Yeah. No, I, I put everyone's um, Instagram names. That's why. What about Twitter? And Twitter. I took okay. the Twitter ones too. Phew. Yeah. yeah. No, everyone was entered. No one got jilted. Okay. All right. Well, Beck Mall, <laughs> congrats again. We'll reach out to you. Thank you, as always, for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Ah! You end. All right. That's it. We did it. Uh, so, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Okay. All right. Well, you can find us on Twitter at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Sentus. Thanks as always for listening. Bye. Bye.